Malcolm Training Tutorials Installation Installing Malcolm using the Installation ISO In this video you will learn how to obtain the Installation ISO How to flash the Installation ISO to a USB flash drive or bootable medium How to install Malcolm for a workstation, server, or VM environment In this video, you'll learn how to install Malcolm using the project's installer ISO these instructions apply to installing Malcolm on a bare metal system or in a virtual machine environment. In other words, the instructions in this video are for a dedicated Malcolm system or virtual machine. If you install Malcolm using the ISO, it will replace the existing operating system and format all non-removable storage attached to the system on which it's being installed. If you want to install Malcolm alongside your current operating system, you need to stop here and watch one of the Installing Malcolm Using Docker videos. Before we start, a quick note on minimum system requirements. If you try to install Malcolm without adequate resources, it will run poorly or crash the machine. Malcolm's minimum system requirements are 16 GB of RAM and 8 CPU cores. However, for an optimal experience, it is recommended to install Malcolm on a system with 32 GB or more of RAM and 16 or more CPU cores. Users will want as much storage space as possible, preferably solid-state storage, as the amount of PCAP data the system can analyze and archive will be limited by available storage. Step 1. How to obtain the installation ISO The Malcolm installation ISO can be downloaded from the Malcolm releases page on GitHub. The documentation for downloading Malcolm provides the most up-to-date instructions for obtaining the installation ISO. Follow those instructions to download the ISO. Note that the Malcolm documentation is a living document, updated regularly with the most current information about Malcolm. It is available at sysagov.github.io slash Malcolm. Step 2. How to flash the installation ISO to a USB flash drive or bootable medium. There are many programs which can flash an ISO to USB or other bootable media. CISA does not promote the use of any tool. Use whichever program fits best with your personal workflow or system. For this example, I'll demonstrate Etcher by Bellina, which is a free open source application. Etcher is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux platforms. I open Etcher and insert my USB stick or bootable medium. Select the first option on the left, Flash from File. This is where I select the source. I navigate to where I save the ISO file on my computer and select it. Next, I select a target. I click Select Target and choose the destination. Having already plugged in my USB thumb drive, I select it from the list. If you have multiple external storage devices connected, make sure to choose the right one. Click Select One. Finally, I click Flash. Your operating system may prompt you for elevated privileges to write directly to the storage device. If so, enter the password for that elevated permission or contact your system administrator for guidance. The program will write the contents of the Malcolm installation ISO to the storage device. This may take a few minutes depending on the speed of your USB drive. You can track the progress on the left. The status bar will go through two passes. The first pass is to write, and the second pass validates that the data was written correctly. Once successful, the program indicates, flash completed. You may now close the program. The ISO has been written to your bootable medium. How to install Malcolm for a workstation, server, or VM environment. Connect the USB thumb drive or bootable medium to the machine on which you would like to install Malcolm. Instead of booting to the regular hard drive, boot to the USB or medium containing the ISO. Most systems will require you to press a function key, such as F10 or F11, to boot a removable device. This video presents a general use case, but the method for booting your system from a removable device depends on the manufacturer of your hardware or virtualization platform. Consult the documentation provided by your manufacturer or your system administrator if you are unsure how to boot from an external storage device. The next step is a critical step. Remember, if you install the Malcolm ISO, it will overwrite everything else on that device and give its resources and storage to Malcolm. If you want to install Malcolm alongside your current operating system, stop here and watch one of the Installing Malcolm Using Docker videos. Docker installation will run Malcolm as an application within the current operating system. 
Installing the Malcolm ISO will create a dedicated Malcolm system with all previous data and storage overwritten. Keep in mind that if you're installing the Malcolm ISO within a virtual machine, the Malcolm installer will not overwrite your host system's hard disk, as Malcolm will be installed onto the virtual block storage device assigned to the virtual machine. From the Malcolm install screen, select Install Malcolm. For installations on hardware, most users will select Quick Install, which will select default Malcolm settings. For installations in a virtual machine, select Virtual Machine Single Partition Quick Install. The installer will begin work, occasionally prompting you with questions. Although the installer will try to detect a network connection, it does not need internet connectivity to install. If it doesn't find a connection, you can select Continue to continue installation without a network connection. Next, it will ask you to enter a host name. For this demonstration, I'm naming it Malcolm. Then it will ask for a domain name. This is optional, if desired for your system or network. You will be prompted to set the root password. This is the administrator password for the Malcolm operating system. You will be prompted to type this twice. You will also be prompted to provide a first and last name for the Malcolm service user account. This is optional. The account username, however, is required. For this username, you could use something generic like analyst, but you are free to choose whatever username you like for this step. You will be prompted to create a secure password for that account. This user password should be different than the administrator password entered a few moments ago. After the passwords are entered, it will start up the partitioner to begin installing. This will take five to 10 minutes depending on the speed of your machine. Towards the end of the installation, you will be prompted with a few more questions. The first question is about whether your network uses IPv6 networking. For certain networks, such as industrial control system networks, it is best practice to turn off IPv6. Other networks, such as IT networks, may use IPv6. It just depends on your network configuration whether you want to disable IPv6. Work with your system administrator if you are unsure. This setting will not impact Malcolm's ability to analyze IPv6 traffic. It simply determines whether Malcolm itself will be reachable over IPv6. The next question is security related. It asks, automatically log into the GUI session? For example, if your machine is in a secure environment and you want the Malcolm desktop to run without typing in the username and password, then select yes. It will automatically log you in when the system boots. If you want it to require the username and password that you created a moment ago, then select no. The next question is similar. Should the GUI session be locked due to inactivity? Select yes. If you would like Malcolm to blank its screen and lock its desktop after a few minutes of inactivity, select no. If you want the Malcolm service user account to remain continuously logged in, the next question is display the standard mandatory DOD notice and consent banner. This question is only applicable to U.S. government installations. Federal law requires that U.S. government-owned systems display a banner with a privacy statement. If you are installing Malcolm on a non-government system, select no. If you are installing Malcolm on a U.S. government-owned system, select yes. The last question is a security-based question. Allow SSH password authentication? Malcolm can be remotely accessed by other machines for management using the Secure Shell protocol. As a security best practice, password authentication over SSH is disabled by default, as it prevents an unauthorized user from attempting to gain remote access to the system using brute force password guessing. Should your specific requirements require SSH authentication using a password, you may select Yes. That wraps up the installation questions. The system will complete the installation. Then it will reboot. You may now disconnect the removable installation medium. It may take a few minutes for Malcolm to boot the first time, depending upon your system. Upon first boot, you will be guided through a series of configuration questions. Check out the description section for links to the Malcolm GitHub site, a Malcolm discussion forum, and more.